What is this here? <laughs> I'd ready to need it, huh? Okay, I tell you what, I'll, I'll start out and just uh, speak briefly, and then I'll open it up to questions. Uh, first of all, everybody's excited this time of year. You know, I've been doing this for over 40 years, and there's not a coach in the country that isn't excited. You know, we're all we're all undefeated and unscored upon, right? So it's 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 great to start it this way. Uh, I look back over last year, and uh, I, I feel like right now we're much improved. You know, I came in, had to install a new offense. Not only had to teach the players, but had to teach the coaches. Uh, they had to find out about me a little bit, and through the course of the season and going through games, I think they know a heck of a lot more about me and about our offense and what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, I, I thought we did some really good things last year. You know, we, we're a hiccup away from not only having a good season, but having an excellent season a year ago. You know, we, uh, we don't turn the ball over a little bit. Uh, we uh, maybe get some field goals and some extra points, uh, and, and we possibly compete for the, Nash, for the uh, uh, league championship last year. So obviously that didn't happen. We got to improve on those areas. We got to stop from turning the ball over. We got to improve our red zone offense. I think if we make some field goals, that'll automatically help to improve our red zone offense. But uh, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm excited about it. Uh, I think we've got some good players. I think they've worked extremely hard, and I'm sure Rocky mentioned that already. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them on the field. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the young freshmen that are coming in. However, I would be very surprised if any incoming freshmen this fall uh, would contribute much offensively this year. And if it happens, it might be a receiver, it might be a running back, and that's possibly it. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape. Our guys have been through the system for uh, two springs, uh, two summers, one season, and uh, hopefully that's paid dividends. So uh, having said all that, what questions do you have? Bob, when you put Quinn in there to kind of manage the games early, and as the season went on, he started to win games for you, what was he taking a big jump since the last minute of the last game of the season? Well, I think, that, first of all, there's, there's two things, actually. He, he missed spring ball because of, the, because of the elbow. You guys know about that, right? He had screws removed, so he missed all the spring ball. And that, that, that hurt him a little bit because I thought there's some things we could have helped to, to improve his ability to play the position. But from a knowledge standpoint, uh, he's head and shoulders above what he was a year ago, has a great feel for the offense, has a better understanding of me and how I work. And so I feel real good about that. It's almost like having a player coach right now. That's how smart he is. He really understands what's going on. From a physical standpoint, uh, I'm anxious to see how the arm responded. Uh, supposedly, he was throwing this summer and doing well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing how his progress is. But just by having him in there, uh, it, it's a settling feeling not only for the players but for the coaching staff. You know, we feel good about his progress, what he did last year, and what his potential is this year. My concern right now is is the backup position. You know, we we came out of spring uh, competing with three guys, and not one of them really raised their head and said, "I'm the backup." So we've got to try to work hard the first uh, week of practice, try to make a decision on a few guys, and then after that point, we got to say, "Okay, this is the second guy, this is the third guy." Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. Coach, the NCAA Well, there was there was there's a couple rules. First of all, you can you can do that or you can not do that and let all the walk-ons and all those guys participate right. too. So Rocky decided to not do that, which I kind of like because it gave me a chance to go on vacation. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm getting too old to be working all July too. But we we really it, it really didn't affect us one bit in how we we uh, function from the past because we as coaches weren't here. Okay. Uh, we didn't get involved with the players, the strength coaches, and the players took care of it all on their own. Bob, what would you have worked with Quinn on physically had he been able to? I, I think footwork, uh, mechanics, uh, more than anything else. Uh, he has a couple flaws in his mechanics that you know we could have hopefully uh, helped get better. And I know on his own, he's he's working on it. So hopefully he's improved in that area. But he needed. Footwork, uh, mechanics, uh, more than anything else. Uh, uh, he's accurate. You know, I, I hope his arm's a little bit stronger. Uh, you know, he is what he is. 
but uh, yeah, foot, footwork. I'm, I'm a big guy on footwork. I mean, when the when the balls be ready to be thrown, your feet got to be in the right spot, and you got to step with the correct foot and do those things. The sacks last year, I know you talked about that in the spring too. That um, really, really need him to to allow fewer of those. Um, yeah. Well, what, 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 what's going to go along since? To help well, I think sacks are a combination of things. Okay, first of all, it starts up front. And everybody always says it's the offensive lineman. And in most cases, uh, we had some offensive line problems last year. We didn't pick up some twists. We didn't pick up some, some dogs and blitzes. So it starts with the offensive line. But it also is the backs. I mean, they've got to pick up their blitzers as well. And then the receiver's got to run the correct route so that when the quarterback's ready to throw the ball, they're in the right spot. And if they're not, he's got to hold the ball a little longer, and then he gets sacked. And then the third thing is the quarterback's got to know where people are, and he's got to get rid of the football. You know, we're, we're a big West Coast type offense where the ball's got to come out on time and you shouldn't get sacked as many times as we did a year ago. So hopefully we'll improve that in, in that area. And again, I think you kind of got to divide it a little bit. You know, you talk about turnovers and then you talk about sacks. You know, in the first game and a half, another quarterback started too. And we had four interceptions and a fumble in the first game and an interception in the second game. And, you know, that's, that's six turnovers right there. So, you know, I, I think we got to start, hey, when, when, when Kate, uh, excuse me, when Quinn took over, you know, what really happened? And uh, I think that's, uh, that's where I'm looking at right now. Do you think it's underappreciated what he accomplished last year, given the walk-on status and J.C. transfer to step up the way he did and go 8-3 and three as a starter, win a bowl game? Mm -hmm. How, how much should we appreciate? I, I think we ought to really appreciate him. I think he's appreciated enough that he got a scholarship, okay? <laughs> and his parents love That's me nice. now, so yeah. But uh, no, I think, uh, you know, we, we appreciate him and I think people ought to appreciate him because, you know, he, uh, he helped us to have a successful season last year and I think he'll, if he stays healthy, he'll help us to continue on, the, on that trend. But uh, we've got a great appreciation for him as a staff and I think the players appreciate him. Because uh, he's good, he's a good, quiet leader, is what he is. Bob, I think your words last year where you were a little concerned that he might not be able to break a pane of glass. Um, <laughs> and, and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but can, because of his uh, his his mental uh, approach to the game, can he overcome those physical limitations with that? Well. Uh, you know, when you have physical limitations, you have physical limitations. You know, you're not going to throw deep comeback routes and all those kind of things. You know, and he reminds me very much of a quarterback I had at Oregon by the name of Bill Musgrave. You know, Bill couldn't break a pane of glass either, but he went on to play some pro football. Now he's a coordinator in pro football. But, you know, he, he's never going to have a strong arm at this point. You know, you are what you are. But the thing that he has is he's, he's got a pretty quick arm. He knows where he's going with the ball, and he's extremely accurate. Wear and tear factor with running backs. How critical is it to find running back two, running back three? Well, you know, everywhere I've been, I've, I've had two running backs. Uh, you know, I've kind of uh, not totally a running back by committee, but I've had two running backs. But the thing I've always had is a thousand yard rusher, and that continued last year. So, I mean, we're going to have a thousand yard rusher if Pumphrey stays healthy. Uh, but I think people they, they they overlook the fact that he's he's a tough strong little guy. Now, he's not very big, and he can take some hits. But he avoids a lot of contact, too, because of the uh, movability. You know, he, he makes guys miss. And so I think uh, because of his, his speed and quickness, he, he avoids getting hit a lot. But he, he's got to be our horse. He's going to carry the ball, and he's going to catch the ball. And he's going to do it as long as he, he can stay healthy. What are you looking for out of that number two guy? Well, yeah, I think I think it could be either one, uh, you know, and possibly another guy. You know, uh, we're, we're looking for a guy to, to a big a big pounding kind of guy, and, and I think you know Chase isn't big, but he pounds in there pretty good. So between him and Stamps, I think uh, those guys could be you know short yardage backs, goal line backs. But we're still going to play with Pumphrey at times in goal line and short yardage because of what he does. But we also need a a, a back in our our nickel package where. You know, sometimes it will be Pumphrey, but sometimes we'll, we'll detach him from the formation. We need another back like, like Chad was last year. He was our nickel fullback or running back in our passing situations. And probably the biggest surprise of all when I gave it to him on a draw against Hawaii and he scored. They didn't even know he had the ball. But, uh, you know, we, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to look for a guy in our nickel package uh, 
uh, and, and again, Pumphrey will be one of them, but we need one more guy in particular in the nickel package. When did Pumphrey become special to you? Was it, in, was it before games even started as far as what you saw in him, or was it really a progression? It was fall camp. It was in our first scrimmage. And he not only surprised me, he surprised a lot of people. I remember the quarterbacks on the sidelines saying, holy cow, who's that guy? And so it was that first scrimmage where we said, hey, it's live, let's go. And uh, he made some runs that were pretty phenomenal. So at that point, we knew that, hey, this guy could probably be special. And then what happened is Mo Moema was injured uh, a little bit during the first part of the season. Uh, that took some carries away from him and gave more carries to Chase. But then Chase got hurt. So then all of a sudden, when Moema comes back, now the backup was Pumphrey. So Pumphrey really had a heck of a year considering he didn't play that much early. And do you think he handled it well as far as being a freshman? And I think he handled it really well. He, yeah. he, he caught on fast to the offense. He learned more and knew more than some guys that were here in spring practice. And that's what disappointed about some guys that were here in spring that didn't perform. Because he actually moved ahead of them because he had more knowledge of what was going on. He didn't make as many mistakes as some other guys. Coach, what about your, your backup quarterback situation? I mean, you know, as far as Chase goes, he's the one who's been in the system the longest. But you're saying that no one really kind of distinguished themselves in the spring. What do you see out of the three guys who are kind of competing for the position? Well, I, they all have different abilities. You know, Chase obviously has the ability to run and make, make some yards with his legs. He's got a strong arm. He's got a quick arm. He, he's not as accurate as he needs to be. He's, he's, he's all over the place with his feet. Uh, Brad Ottoman, the JC transfer, had to learn what's going on. Uh, he's got some ability, but he really hasn't played quarterback that long. He was a tight end also in junior college. And then Nick Bodden came in, and I think Nick has got a lot of upside. He is very smart. He's, he's like Quinn. He knows the offense probably better than anyone else beside Quinn as a true freshman coming in last spring. Uh, his thing is, is mechanics again. I mean, he's got some ability. He was in our summer camp uh, two years ago and uh, impressed us in camp. That's why we gave him a scholarship. So he's got physical ability. He's the strongest quarterback on the team. He's really phenomenal in the weight room. And uh, he's got a lot of ability. So he, he's a young guy. He was a 17-year-old kid in spring practice. So we're saying, hey, because of his knowledge and because of his ability, we think he's got a chance as well. But we can't continue to have three quarterbacks as the backup. we got to make a guy the backup, and then the third guy is going to watch a lot, and then the fourth guy's done for the year, unless something happens. Bob, this is a sidebar question about the running back situation. When you got to the end of the line, when you saw what happened with Moema, his decision, what's transpired since that point in time, were you maybe stunned, amazed, disappointed? What? I feel bad for the kid. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit, little bit surprised what happened. Uh, you know, it kind of hit us in the back of the head. We weren't ready for this. You know, I had a feeling that he was going to try to come out after this year because he had mentioned something to me. Uh, but, but to, for, for for what happened to him, total shock. I'm total surprise. I mean, I, I had no idea what was going on. And and again, disappointed for him. You know, he had a chance to go on and. Get, a, get an opportunity to play pro football and maybe make some money and help himself and his family down the road. And Now he doesn't have his degree and he doesn't have pro football. So I, I feel bad for the kid. Were there signs of issues here that something wasn't right? No, that's what kind of surprised me. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, I, I knew, again, I knew he was probably going to come out if he had a good year because he had mentioned it to me. And he had a pretty good year. So I, I, I thought, hey, he's going to come out. But f for what happened to him, I, I, that, that hit me in the Blindside for sure, yeah. Is Ella Ruffin coming back? I mean, how, how important is that going into the season with your young receivers? Well, it's good. It's good. You know, like I said, first of all, we had a 1,000-yard rusher. We had a 3,000-yard passer. And we had a 1,000-yard receiver. So we did some good things. You know, we averaged 30 points a game and 425 yards a game. Normally, that's a pretty good offense, OK? But Azell Ruffin, uh, again, is a, is a guy who I was concerned that might come out. He, now, he never told me that. But I was concerned he might come out, and I'm thankful that he didn't because I think he's got a lot of upside. He's a, a big, strong, physical guy that goes and gets the ball, uh, makes some big plays, uh, has worked extremely hard in the offseason, uh, and you know he's got a chance to be one of the leaders of our football team and have, a, have a, an excellent year again. And this year what I'll do 
is I'll have the ability to move him around a little bit more. We didn't move him as much because we had Vizzy and Denzel last year, but this year I'll have the ability to maybe move him around with Clark emerging a little bit and a couple other receivers. So we'll put him in some different positions to take even more advantage of his ability. Coach, you're sort of, you sort of know what you're getting on the left end. I'm considering, you know, his experience and mm -hmm. you know, just watching him. Um, Eric Judge, he's such a blast last year as well. So there's one guy, Jamon Hazley, I mean, in practice he seems like, you know, he's going to be really good. And, and Coach has mentioned a few times now that he's probably the, the most talented wide receiver on, on the roster. What, what do you think has to click with him in order to take that next step? Well, first of all, he's outstanding. He's got outstanding ability. Uh, his, his problem was, was learning what to do. You know, he made way too many mistakes. And, you know, you, you, you can't line up wrong and be in the wrong position and run the wrong route and play in this game. Now, I think he's made great strides since that time. He's, he's worked hard last year to try to improve. He worked extremely hard in the offseason. He had a pretty good spring. And the one thing we did is we just kept him at split end. We didn't move him around at all. We tried to keep it as simple as we could for him and let him learn. And now that he's got a pretty good grasp on it, I think he can help contribute. And we might even now try to put him a little bit maybe in another position with a play or two and not try to overload him mentally with the, with the offense. But his, his drawback and, and, and the thing that kept him back was just the, the knowledge and understanding of what to do. Bob, you've been on both sides of the fence as a head coach in a big time program and what you're experiencing here. Mm -hmm. Philosophically, how do you decide how much is too much as it relates to schedule, non-conference schedule? Well, I've been around a long time. Like you said, you know, I was at Pacific. I was at Tulane. And, and, and you know, you, you, as, as a mid-major, you got to play some of those games for, for a financial reason, OK? But I think more than two is probably too much for a mid-major. Because the league itself is tough enough, you know? So for us to play two like we have been, you know, Ohio State, Oregon State, uh, North Carolina, Oregon State, I think that's enough, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I'm impressed with it. You know, and again, I had one year of exposure when I was in New Mexico with Rocky. So I, and, and Utah was in the conference of BYU at the time. But yeah, this, this is a good conference. It's a good conference. I, and again, I coached in Conference USA. In my opinion, there was a couple of good teams in Conference USA, but there wasn't the total group of teams like in the Mountain West Conference that are good. Any last questions for Coach? Thank you. Look forward Thank to you. seeing you in the, in the season.